in this lecture today, we're going to be looking at the concept of, of resonance. And this is a really uh, important concept for, for you guys to, to come to grips with, because this is the first time that you're going to see uh, the movement of electrons, the breaking and the formation of bonds. And to get to grips with this concept is going to set you up for understanding reaction mechanisms as we move forward. And so I'm going to take this through uh, with you very, very slowly to make sure that you understand uh, what we are doing. Uh, to explain this, I'm going to start off with a molecule of uh, acetic acid, CH3COOH. All right. And by now you will have learned that this is a carboxylic acid functional group, okay, COOH. And carboxylic acid groups are uh, called acids because this proton over here is acidic. So if we do some acid base chemistry and we just add sodium hydroxide to that, this base will easily pick up uh, this proton over there. And following through with that, we're going to get the carboxylate, CH3COO minus uh, plus H2O. And of course, the minus is going to be associated with the sodium counter ion over there. All right, so that's just a standard acid base reaction, which you should know. Uh, and is important for you to know, in fact. Uh, what I want to look at, though, is this carboxylate anion. I, I want to get rid of the, the sodium. Don't worry about it. It's just a counter ion. We're going to get rid of that. Uh, and if I drew this out in its skeletal structure, it would look something like this, O minus on it like that. For us to move forward now, what I want to do is we need to draw out the Lewis structure of this. And I want you to first attempt this yourself. We pause the video, draw out the Lewis structure, and then come back to the video and see if you got that correct. All right, I want the Lewis structure, and I want lone pairs of electrons where they should be on the two oxygens that we have drawn out over here. Please do try this yourself. All right, make the mistake uh, and learn from it, or maybe you get it right and then you'll feel confident with yourself that you're starting to learn the chemistry uh, as well. So please just pause the video now. Okay, well, I hope that you ended up with a structure that looked something like this over here. All right, so Looking at this, hopefully you got all the electrons correct. There should be a negative charge here on this oxygen. We can see the carbon over here has single sigma bonds, all right, four of them. And this carbon over here has a sigma bond to that carbon, has one sigma bond to this oxygen, and that this second bond over here is actually a pi bond to the oxygen. And then we've got a sigma bond to this oxygen over here. And we should have the correct number of lone pairs. Because this is negatively charged, oxygen must have its octet. It ends up having six lone pair electrons or three lone pairs. Uh, and this oxygen, which is neutral, will have two lone pairs uh, and the two bonds. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the pi bond that we were looking at, all right, over there, and the lone pairs of electrons of this oxygen. And I'm going to do that in the uh, yellowy green highlight. And the lone pair of electrons of the other oxygen, I'm just going to highlight in uh, pink so that we can just see where they are and what we're going to be doing with them. What I want us to do first, in considering this concept of resonance, it's just a thought experiment we're going to do now, just something we're thinking out. It's not something that happens in reality. Uh, we'll explain that a little bit as we just get more comfortable with doing this. But we're going to start moving electrons that are in bonds away from it being into a bond. Now, in this concept, we are only dealing with pi bonds and lone pairs of electrons. We're not touching the sigma bonds. That is why I've left them unhighlighted. And all we're going to do in this thought experiment is that we're going to recognize that this pi bond here, this line, represents two electrons. I could have drawn it as two dots, which have been similar to the two lone pairs. 
And all we're going to do, this is something very simple, is we're going to take those electrons that are sitting in this bond and we're going to move them onto the oxygen over there. Now what I want you to do is I want you to, to try and draw out what the structure will look like once you have moved those electrons there onto the oxygen up there. And I want you to fill in the correct charges that remain on the various atoms, like this one is a negative charge. So try that for yourself now. Just see what you come up with and then come back and see if you got it correct. So I'm really hoping that you managed to get a structure that looked a bit like this. All right, all we have done is we have taken this pi bond right, that has two electrons, that line can be an example of two electrons, we've moved it up, and so the electrons are now a new lone pair sitting on that oxygen over there. And obviously because of that, if we count all this up, the oxygen now has a negative charge, just like this one over here, and the carbon, because it only has three bonds to it, and it lost electrons in this movement, it is now a positive charge like that. The reason the electrons are going to move in this direction is because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So the electrons will prefer to move towards oxygen. Now what we have just done now, we move the pi bond, the, oxygens, the, the lone pair of electrons, onto the oxygen, we can actually do the exact reverse and we can take the lone pair of electrons and move them down back onto the carbon to form a double bond and go back in this direction like that. And the way we indicate that this would happen is that this process that we're showing is a resonance and the arrow we use is this arrow over here. Okay, it's a double-sided arrow. It's not the equilibrium arrows, all right? It's not an equilibrium arrow, which is one that looks like that. Okay, two half-headed arrows. Okay, it's not that. This is not an equilibrium. This is a special arrow. We only use it to indicate resonance. It's the movement of pi electrons and lone pairs. And so we could take these ones and put them back in here, and we'd end up with the thing that we had in the beginning. But hopefully you'll appreciate with me that if I can take this lone pair, and it could have been this lone pair that could move in as well, or this lone pair that could have moved in, if we can do it with this oxygen, we can do it with this oxygen as well. And so what I want you to do is to now draw out this structure. If I had to take this lone pair, all right, and move the lone pair in and form a new bond over there. So try that for yourself, draw out the structure, and then come back. Once again, I hope that this is the type of structure that you got to. All right, it looks very similar to the structure that we have at the beginning, if we ignored all the colors that we, we have. But hopefully what you are able to do is you see that we formed a new pi bond over there. This oxygen is now neutral. The carbon is now neutral because it accepted an electron in that pi bond. And this oxygen over here is still negative. All right. So let's do the same thing again. But I'm just going to remove the Lewis structures. And we're just going to do this using our skeletal structures. So to finish off this lecture, let's just look at this acetate anion again. All right. This is the skeletal structure that we that we should be more familiar with working with, not the Lewis structure. All the hydrogens are hidden, lone pairs of electrons are hidden. We've just got the negative charge on the oxygen here. And what we did, if you remember, was you moved a lone pair of electrons, which is effectively what this negative charge is. This negative charge is a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. And so we use our arrow to show the movement of those electrons going in to form a new pi bond between this uh, carbon and oxygen. But in doing this, this pi bond over here needs to break and the electrons need to go onto 
the oxygen over there. And so we draw our resonance arrows and we end up with now oxygen there with a negative charge and this oxygen over there uh, uh, being neutral. All right, this bond was the minus charge that came in and formed a new pi bond and the pi bond that was there has become that minus charge over there. All right, if you're struggling to see it in the skeletal structures that I've drawn here, go back to your Lewis structures and make sure that you see what I've drawn here corresponds to them. And the thing with resonance is that the movement of electrons must always be in both directions. So we're moving the electrons in like that, and we get this structure, which we can then do the complete reverse and move the electrons back on, getting back this structure over here. And we should be able to, to do that. Now this is resonance. This is the movement of the electrons. And there's a very two very, very important principles that we need to just pick up from this. The first one, and probably the most important one when we're doing this, is the meaning of the arrows. And I'm not talking about this arrow over here. All right, It is important to remember that this double-headed arrow is indicating resonance. It's these arrows here. All right, These arrows and arrows in organic chemistry, uh, when we're showing mechanisms, only mean one thing. It means the movement of electrons. And you have to make sure that you keep that first and foremost in your mind. It's the movement of electrons, only electrons. We're not showing movement of atoms ever. Okay. And then in terms of resonance, all right, there's something just, just to reiterate this. Um, resonance, can't spell. Uh, in terms of resonance, resonance is only, only, only movement of electrons but not just any electrons so the movement of electrons uh, from lone pairs or pi bonds to lone pairs or pi bonds Okay, resonance can be from pi bonds to pi bonds, where we move from lone pairs to lone pairs, and also uh, we're going to see, uh, and I won't ask you a question now, but also it can be to empty uh, orbitals. Uh, but the key thing here with resonance is the movement of the electrons. Um, it's not, categorically not, not, not anything to do with sigma bonds. All right. Resonance does not involve the breaking or formation of sigma bonds. Never, ever, ever. All right. It is only pi bonds, lone pairs of electrons. Those are the types of electrons that are moving in resonance. So I'm going to leave you with two questions. One is very similar. I want you to draw out the resonance structure of this compound over here, NH, and there's a minus on the nitrogen. This, this one should be very, very similar to what we have already done and shouldn't be too much of a challenge. But the one that might challenge you a little more is to take this compound over here, which is acetone, but this carbon, I'm putting a minus charge on that carbon. So if you draw out the Lewis structure, you will find out that this carbon only has two hydrogens on it. That's the only clue I'm going to give to you. And that the, the negative charge means that there's a lone pair on that carbon. And I want you to draw out a resonance structure for that. Once you've done that, there's another video on my YouTube channel called The Consequences of Resonance. You can go and find that. And that will just take this idea of resonance to another level and explain to you why resonance is actually incredibly important uh, for us to understand. All right. Good luck with this.